Episode 33 of the Nerd Turd Podcast. Welcome. Thank you for tuning in. You're get ready for the greatest podcast experience of your week. We are joined after a long absence by, our, by our good friend Brown Eyes. Brown Dragon. <laughs> and as always, producer Gene, call me Gene Tom, single ready to mingle, but maybe not so much lately. Hey yo! How was your trip? Brown Eyes, Christopher Brian, Brian Shaw? I was not at all prepared for the frigid wind to come off of those skyscrapers. Wait, really? You weren't prepared for that? You can't be for prepared reference, for that. If you didn't listen to last week, Chris was, uh, he abandoned the Nerd podcast. And I was York. gallivanting the streets of New York. City. City, not state. <laughs> not state. The city, yes. Um, so if you want to completely ward off the wind, it doesn't matter. You have to have like a ski mask. I mean, because like your face is getting blasted. Did you get a So ski you know mask? how, no. So you know how sometimes at like the beach, you get like a wind burn on your face? Uh, no, I can't feel that over the sunburn. <laughs> that is true. Your skin is delicate. Um, just like your feelings. But not like my biceps. Boom, baby. All right, keep going. <laughs> Boom, baby. Gene, let's see your biceps, dude. Sorry, he's got rhabdo. Let's keep going. Um, so yeah, no. I, uh, had a lot of fun. It was really cool. I will say one thing I was super mad about in Rockefeller Center there is a Nintendo store. I was super pumped about like, going uh, like, there. Like the store is called Nintendo? Like it's like a Nintendo store, like an Apple store yeah. or a Windows store, like a like a Walmart store or a Nintendo store. Gotcha. It wasn't just like name that. But I was excited about going there and I pulled on the door handle at 7.02 p.m. only to find out that this store closes at 7 p.m. Were there still sharp. people in there? I bet that was frustrating. Yes. And like the security guard was like, get out, get us, we're closed, we're closed. Get as far away from here as possible. And I was so mad. I was like, literally, if I would have been five minutes earlier, I could have walked in there. Yeah, that's a bummer, man. Also, in New York, what place closes at 7 p.m. in New York City? It was a Sunday night, so I'm thinking that maybe that had something to do with it. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the city that never sleeps. It's, yeah, I was going to say, it's literally referred to as the city that never sleeps. In 7 p.m., they're it's sleeping. like before babies go to sleep. There's a lot of people up. That place was packed, boy. I ate a lot of pizza. Well, that's what doesn't make sense about it. That's a really high populated area for a oh, store, yeah. for a retail store to close down at 7 p.m. in know. New York City. It's not as it seems. Things things are awry. All right, so New York City is fake news. I'm never going yeah, there. Yeah, don't go there. Have you been in New York? No. Hmm. What? Never? Uh, no, I've never been. It's a hmm. cultural staple. No, right? I've, uh, I'm very untraveled. Uh, the only place I've ever been that's exciting is Puerto Rico. Me and Chris went to Ohio one time. Yep. And then, uh, you know, obviously like the normal boring places like Florida and like Atlanta around here. Like I've been to all those places. Been to Alabama, which was... Florida is not boring. That literally led us to the best story of our entire uh, lives. Right. But I'm saying like people in South Carolina say like, yo, I went on this crazy trip to Florida. They'd be like, oh, cool. You know what I mean? You don't know? I feel like every, you don't feel like everyone in South Carolina has been to the state of Florida. I don't feel like everyone in the state of South Carolina has been to New York. You know what I'm saying? I can't what? I can't believe I'm alone in this. I really <laughs> haven't processed what you're saying. Everyone that you know has probably been to Florida. Everyone that you know has not been to New York City. I will say growing up my family was religious about going to Myrtle Beach. And so we never went to Florida. And I would always hear people talk about going to Florida. And I thought it was some like, like I imagine Florida in my mind is the way that now I like imagine the Caribbean. Like crystal blue waters, you know. But then I went to Florida, Florida and like it was that. Daytona. The problem is. Well, that's because you went to Daytona. You didn't go to a cool part of Florida. You Actually, just went probably, to Daytona Beach. Probably Panama City was my first Florida experience. Yeah. So that's the thing about uh, Florida is there's parts of Florida that are like the Caribbean, but no one goes there because they're super far away. But they want to say they went on a vacation to Florida. So they go to Daytona Beach because it's like the sweet spot. That's like an exactly eight hour drive. Right. And so it's like not too crazy to do it in a car. And, you know, you don't have to pay for a flight. But I don't dude, know. I just thought of something. We need to create a video segment on our YouTube NTT, not Nerd Turd Talks, but Nerd Turd Travels. 
It there's just, a thought. And it's just us. The one time a year we go to there's Florida. There's a thought. <laughs> I mean, eventually, <laughs> after a, a period of, of time. No, we'll definitely go to Myrtle playlist. Beach, too. That would, don't tease me with that. <laughs> Dude, I would that would be fun. Tonight, bro. Candlelight tease. dinner recording on the beach. That would be hor- that would be a nightmare situation to record video. I hate sand. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> it gets everywhere. You're on the beach and the only light is candlelight. Literally, you would only see you ever three seen red the moon? Dots. I know. Other than uh, the Nintendo store, did you anything nerd worthy in New York? I went to a comic book store called Midtown Comics. It's like one of the largest comic book stores. Um, in America, you definitely bought a Funko Pop there. I didn't. I thought about it, but it was all right. Did you come mm. back from New York City without a Funko Pop? I did. That shocks me. Like that legitimately shocks me. I did. I'm trying to think if I bought anything cool. I bought a hundred and forty dollar jacket. Wow, can't hide yeah, money. I know, right? I guess I'm, <laughs> that means I'm. Jeez, I guess that wow. means I'm getting old. Jeez, man, gets a swanky new job now. He's just buying hundred and forty dollar. No, I just jacket. got a jacket rolling in it. Rolling, rolling. Well, Gene, you didn't go to New York City, but did you have a good week? Hmm? I did. Did you do anything exceptionally fun? No. All I right, let's get into the podcast. <laughs> the thing. podcast. Hey. No, I got this cool. You guys told me I needed some Star Wars gear, so hey, I'll show the I'll show the episode the episode the viewers. <laughs> Vader, dude, you could do such a cool Vader bomb in that sweatshirt. <laughs> Vader bomb of all. That's not what I thought you Dude, you know say. who would make an awesome Vader for real, though? <laughs> the Undertaker. Think what? about Vader's force choke. Instead of a force choke, it's a force choke slam. I thought that was <laughs> Kane. Undertaker. They both did it. They were, Kane was Undertaker's brother. I know, but I you thought... You guys, this is, a, this is an entire... This is a subculture. unexplored subculture of the Nerd Turd podcast that we need to... We have Dude, not speaking of got that, into. Did so. Parker tell you? What I sent him? WWE him? fight in downtown Greenville on Friday. That I had, that I could have got a suite tickets too. Yeah, Why Chris you, is, what? I had prior obligations. <laughs> so also, what what you need to know is on our new segment on YouTube, NTT Nerd Turd Travels, is that it's going to be us traveling to WWE SmackDown <laughs> live in downtown, downtown or us Greenville. All the places that Chris could have got us tickets <laughs> to, but didn't want to change his plans. Up yes, a little bit. that as well. No, so here's the thing, Kane. What his finishing move was the choke slam. I'm pretty. I'm. So it was the Undertaker's at one point, along with the Tombstone. Yeah, but then he just ex- then he just exclusively became Tombstone, right? I don't know. I don't know. Yes, this is a whole nother. Yeah, I need y'all to stop pointing weapons at each other in here. This is a place of peace. Uh, <laughs> this is the war room, dog. <laughs> if uh, if Maria's ever on this podcast again, we will definitely do uh, the same. I would prefer when so. Maria's on the podcast again. That is true. Hey, she's when, in the room. Not if. Hey. Well, you know, I can't like. I can't force people to do things as much as I wish I could. Hashtag future Sith Lord. Mm. All right. Well, I didn't do anything exciting. I bought, actually, this isn't exciting. These are just things I purchased. I bought a new laptop. That is exciting. This is the Nerd Turd podcast. You literally posted in our Discord uh, deals links for hardware. Yeah. Yeah, That's so, completely relevant to yeah, this podcast. Yeah, I got this sweet deal. So it's very hard to find a laptop with a, a dedicated graphics card. That's difficult to buy or find. That isn't like a thousand dollars, you know. Especially if you're just trying to find like a laptop to not do anything crazy on. And then I found uh, found this one. It was four hundred ninety nine bucks, which is super cheap for a laptop in general, and it had a dedicated graphics card. So it looks tough, dude. Oh, and it has a Ryzen five in it, which if you were just a, you know. When I was last aware of Ryzen 5 prices, you know, just that graphics or the uh, CPU, it's like 200 bucks. Cool. So uh, that's what I did. That's pretty awesome. Okay. So Chris was the only one that had a really eventful week. We didn't yeah. really do anything. Yeah. My Christmas party for work is tomorrow, though. Dude, mine was this past Tuesday. Super did fun. Did you go crazy? No, but we went to one of those places that has those like, um, the like golf simulators like the indoor golf simulator where you like hit into the big curtain and it's like a realistic like thing. And so we switched it not to golf, but they have a baseball thing and then you hit a baseball off a tee and based off the speed, it hits the, the, um, the thing that hangs down and the trajectory, you can have a home run derby. Dude, so you were just hitting dingers, dingers baby. Lefto and righto. You hit, wow. What do you normally, where do you normally hit a baseball? 
to right. the outfield. Well, I mean, like I right mean, or to left. the stands. Would you? Okay, but is your stance right-handed or left-handed? Anywhere I can hit dingers. Any, <laughs> anywhere, anytime, any place. Doesn't matter. Any way. I can bun a dinger. That's interesting. Well, let's get into episode thirty-three of the Nerd Turd Podcast. Oh yeah, y'all killed my. I can't even do my Spanish anymore because y'all killed it last week. Y'all yeah. had one job. Uh, no, we had a lot of jobs. Lo siento. We had we had stuff to do. We move on. So we're gonna be getting into some popping off. We it is well. First off, it's Star Wars month, December. It's back. It's here. It's Everyone's now. wearing a dedicated Star Wars clothing except for me because the only thing assured in this life, come December, is that it's almost tax time. That Star Wars Episode Nine is coming out, and that Clemson is gonna win their ninth straight national championship. <laughs> is what it feels like. So I'm wearing some Clemson gear. There you go. There it is. To celebrate the greatest football team on the planet Earth. Future, the next eight future number one draft picks, Travis Etienne, T. Higgins, same year. Go ahead, put it on the table real quick. What's the score of the Ohio State game? Oh. Ooh, of the Clemson-Ohio State game? Yep. Mm. I'm going 45-21 Clemson. I, was, I, I promise you, I was going to say 42-21. to 21. Wow. We're synced. Oh, gosh, I'm about to destroy everything. Don't destroy everything. All right, but uh, Star Wars Month, this whole episode is going to be about Star Wars, so buckle up. If you don't like Star Wars... Deal with it. It's going to be a good time anyway. And then uh, we're talking about popping off. We've got some trailers also that we're going to talk about. Ooh, it's going to be a good time. Yeah, it, was a, it was a nice week. So, And then our stuff. main digestion mm. is mm. going to be Star Wars theories. Theory. We've got a few fan theories, but we're going to be diving into ours specifically. Rise of the Skywalker. Rise of the Skywalker theories. And it's it comes out a, a week time. from today. I know. We that's will crazy. be in the movie a week from right One now. One week from today. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. That's kind of weird to think about, actually. <laughs> Mainly, it's crazy to think about how fast December is going. And then next week, I got y'all's uh, gift exchange gift. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Gift. You yeah, got us one I have all thing. of y'all's. Yeah. I got it all. Buckle up, dude. It's going to be good. Dude, I'm ready. Gene's going to love it. I don't know if you're going to love it. That means it's practical, ain't it? No. Oh. Well, we're adults. Everything is practical now. Dude, it has nah, to be. No way. Well, like, I mean, what do you do? You can't, like, go outside and play anymore. You can't go throw a football? When's the last time you just, like, it's Tuesday night. Let me go outside and throw a football. You got to have a friend. Exactly. Did I just say I don't have friends? Sad. <laughs> sad. I'm a sad boy. I'm sad, a Ben Solo. Sad, sad boy. <laughs> I'm a Ben Solo. All right, let's get into popping off. First uh, thing, we're going to get into the Ghostbusters trailer, which Ooh. basically is Stranger Things. 2.0 and or uh it chapter four basically based on the cast right yeah i mean it's got a lot of Just three it chapter three new oh, emerging three. stars in it is it new emerging stars or have they just full-on emerged at that, this point because they've been in it chapter one it chapter two and now three seasons of stranger things i would say they're some of the most recognizable people on earth at this point hmm. i won't go that far but yeah then maybe they're emerged I mean, as far as, like, pop culture goes. I mean, like, yeah, LeBron James is more recognizable than whatever this dude, you know, the dude with the long hair in this uh, movie. What is the guy's actual name? The, the, he looks like he's the main character in this. Finn Michael Wolford. Things. It, oh, yeah, he's Canadian. IRL. Finn He's Wolford. in a band, a Canadian mm -hmm. band. That's the Stranger Things kid, right? Yes, that is his name. Finn Wolford. Mm -hmm, like Wolfhard, but Wolford. I think this trailer actually looks pretty cool. I am not, like, big into Ghostbusters. That's not, like, a... I know that's like a whole, it's got its whole like dedicated like subculture. Dude, people it are definitely super does. into yeah. it. Um, a lot of those movies do. Like it, mm -hmm. it had that. Like there were people who hated it, like the new iteration, just because they had a different person playing the clown. Yeah. Um, but no, uh, I, I never was like, I mean, I've seen Ghostbusters, but it's not like something that like stands on my mind. But this movie actually looks pretty cool. It looks really awesome. I think, I mean, even just the vibe of it is just. I like the way they're modernizing and like I feel like now we're just in a time in general where movies like this aren't just like a pop culture thing. They're like a culture thing, you know, like everyone's going to go see it and it's just going to be a part of everyone like Stranger Things, right? Like back when I was a kid, only a certain group of people would have watched that, you know, but now it's yeah, like mainstream. Yeah, that's probably true. So I feel like it'd be the same way. With I also feel like when I was uh, like... Until I was in college, the only shows I watched were like Dragon Ball Z. That's and completely that, okay. And the things that came on Adult Swim, because that was the only time I had watched it. Because I didn't even get home till like eight, and all the like after school shows were 
off and it was all like lame news television yeah. that my parents were watching. Hmm. I'm I'm a fan of it too. I actually I never really was like big into Ghostbuster stuff either. When I was growing up, I mean, I knew the movies, but never really watched them, but I thought it was really cool how they connected it. How it's almost like a a sequel ish yeah. kind of like esque yeah. kind of that this new group of kids are whatever i guess related to the original ghostbusters yeah, that's they and... made it seem like that they were all related in some mm-hmm. way yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's kind of cool so now, did they do i know it's they did i don't think it's re, would be related to this but did they redo like ghostbusters like they did they just make an updated ghost they did they in did like that with all girls 2016 yeah it's like but it's not related McCarthy, to that one like but it's all, not related you know, at all right it's related to like the original one so in in the trailer the the stuff on the that. stuff on the TV that they show is like clips from the original Ghostbusters with like Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd and stuff like that. So from here a was, long time ago. But here was my one cool. issue with the trailer is the uh, you know Ben Stiller in it and wait not Ben Stiller what's his name the guy Ant Man what's his Paul name? Rudd Paul Rudd <laughs> Ben Stiller <laughs> he's the same guy <laughs> no, he's not. they're the same actor. <laughs> They do the same things. They'll like, I'm going to be goofy and play dumb thing, but also kind of smart. <laughs> well, I owned it. I got the guys mixed up. But uh, So <laughs> Paul Rudd, that's his name? Yes. Yeah. All right. That dude. They, here's the reason I almost hate his character in every movie he ever plays. Because he's like, he. it's like he's smart, but also like equally ditzy in every single thing he's ever in. So apparently he's a person that can monitor tectonic plates. He's also a person that is fully aware that there were ghosts walking the streets in the 80s in this trailer, but he can't connect the dots of that there's no reason why earthquakes would be happening. This was a city in which ghosts were you know, running rampant in, in his lifetime, and that those two things wouldn't be connected. He's also talking to kids, and, hasn't, and at least it makes it seem like these dots haven't been connected yet. He's talking to kids who have a Ghostbuster gun, He's fully aware of that. He recognizes that as a replica, or at least he thoughts, thinks it's a replica. And then it takes him to the end of that trailer to be like, there's a ghost. Yeah. You know? So hmm. that was the only thing about it. I was like, what? How did you not immediately connect these dots if you were aware that this was a city in which ghost existed? Yeah. Because I think, they even show clips of it. They show like yeah, scenes yeah. in the original. I movie. think it's, I think it's, that's a good point. So, I mean, it's definitely, they definitely left some stuff out of the trailer because it's a trailer, obviously, and I think we all know that, but. Can we talk about the fact that I thought that was Ben Stiller? I mean, <laughs> we did. We did. But, yeah, I think that they definitely left some stuff out. I think that there'll probably be something in the movie about how when it all happened and at the end of it, they thought that it was all done, so there was no legitimate reason for them to believe that Ghost would be back because they assumed that they were all gone. I'm sure Dude, that'll be what the they do. That's the biggest mistake when it but comes to There might be, of course, yeah. just like any but, other good movie nowadays, there might be a memory loss trope. Think about that one. But what, if, cool. what if it ties in directly to Men in Black and then they go in and flash the Crossovers of the Rage. You didn't see the Avengers? That's a good point. <laughs> That's a I mean, really Justice League point. crossovers but are I all think, the rage. I think all in all, it'll be a it'll be a fun time. It'll yeah, probably there will probably be a like a whole group of people that's like this does the whole original Gus, but it does a complete injustice, and there will be people that are upset about it. But I think it'll be as someone who doesn't care about the integrity of the Ghostbusters lore, I think this will be a good time. Yeah, it'll be good. My favorite part is that uh, Mike went from dressing up as a Ghostbuster in Stranger Things. That was literally the first thing I thought being about. Being a Ghostbuster. And I so, almost was, cool. I almost wondered, because, I mean, the shooting for, I mean, no, when did they do that? In season one of Stranger Things? Two. I think they did it in season one and two. I think they did in both of them. Maybe. That's true? I don't know. I know I'm not season sure. Season two. You know for a fact. But season season two. two, yes, because that's when the they first saw the mind flare. What did they dress up as in season one? I thought they dressed up in different things in each season. I, I know two was Ghostbusters. It's been a while since we've seen those. We'll have to go back and fact check Here, ourselves. I'll have to look, look at them. On, so. look. Yeah, yeah, just look that up. Uh, the next thing that's going on actually tonight as we're recording this is the Game Awards. Uh, <laughs> the <laughs> Game the only Awards. Thing we'll, there's a million different things that will win awards. Um, the only thing we'll talk about for a second here, and you'll find out why for a second, uh, see it. is the uh, Game of the Year nominees. 2019 the nominees. Big boys. There's a lot of them. So a lot of different categories, but and as I think game about of this, the year. so when I look at this list, and if I'll just run through this really quickly, um, so the games that are nominated for game of the year, uh, can you scroll to the what's it called? Control, mm-hmm. Death Standing, Resident Evil 
two. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, and The Outer Worlds. It's now, fun. I do not understand why Resident Evil 2 is on that list. Did they do a remake? A remaster? I don't know. Yeah, they did. That seems cheap. That seems like it's cheating. If you remastered a game that was previously good to get another award for it, that yeah. seems like that's not fair. I have no idea what Control is. I've literally never heard of that. In I've never heard of it either. I've been seeing some stuff on uh, like Twitter and different social media platforms where I didn't really look into it a lot, but people were saying that Control kind of like plays how people wish um fallen order would have played like fallen order so some of the things you can do like uh, there's like clips and stuff i think i've seen where you're like, you're like they're throwing people around and oh, that's kind of cool doing Maybe things like that no i i got i'm stuck Dude, on the i was so telling chris hard. on the way here i'm stuck on the first like uh planet thing that you get to where you unlock the like basically the entire gist of the story and i, I like, found that one giant frog thing and he's guarding a chest and the type of gamer that i am with open world like solo games is like i want to do everything and i can't beat him and so i haven't moved on yet I, he, he killed so he, he killed me twice and i started playing red dead so i haven't gone hey, back yet. the new uh thing the moonshiners dude hey not yet. i will i swear i'll play that with you guys i was literally about to bring this up so red dead online yeah just it, dropped wait, a new expansion wait is or... the update to i thought the update was tomorrow oh i don't know it's called moonshiners have yeah, you no. played it yet no okay i'm pretty sure the update's tomorrow and so, A, I'm pretty sure Red Dead Online, from everything I'm hearing about it, is just dope, and we should definitely play it, because that'd be a good time. We could get the old uh, gang back together. Dude, the gang hasn't been back together since it was ruined by Fortnite. Yeah, we can mm. we can call some chaos, uh, run some moonshine. Dude, me and tells. Parker would spend hours just tackling each other and fist fighting over and over again. You remember we played with Heath that one time or dude, whatever it was, it was so and we fun. literally just it was chaos for like twenty minutes. Just that's what I'm saying, just, dude. I, chilling and I, just tackle each other. That's I I wanna do this. Can we do this? Yeah. I'm what game what game do Can you we f- do this and then find a way to make a YouTube video out of it? Yeah. I mean you can stream it while we're playing it and then just have it on OBS. See? Look at you learning stuff. What around, uh it? what game do we think should should win? Uh okay game let me, of the year. So, did I, I don't know if I read the rest of them, but Shakira's Shadows Die Twice, that's the best game on there. That is the best game. The game that will win this, mark my words, Death Stranding. It mm. is like, that is like the kind of game that wins these awards because everyone's like, oh, it's such a beautiful game. It's the most ingenious game, really, when it's just a glorified mailman. If you've Ooh, seen anything about it, that's what it is. Take. Literally, that's what it is. Is that the game where you're like delivering boxes? Wow. Yes. They're, you're stacked on them and you wow. can like trip and like fall and drop all your boxes and you got to pick them back up put them on your back and do the same thing so over and over again. i did hear by a lot of video game sources that i trust that played that game i didn't play it at all i haven't turned it on i don't own yeah, it yeah. I've, I've honestly watched very it's a ps4 it. exclusive i've i've heard that it's really cool i've heard it's beautiful and a really awesome game it just definitely not my type of game well so that's the thing is like everyone that i saw try it went into it thinking that because it looks like you're just carrying boxes around but everyone that i know and and that are sources that i trust on the internet because that's hard to come by like ended up falling in love with it like just between the story and the mechanics of the game and everything else they ended up falling in love with it so maybe i'm changing my vote here that i i kind of do it's gonna win just white um shakira uh shakira (laughs) shakira ben stiller so shakira um is is almost like a dark souls i'm um, pretty sure it's so is fallen same. order i'm pretty sure it's maybe <laughs> the same so people right? uh that's gonna be a good time i think people will it'll be cool uh, I think once they, the, uh, they deserve to win it once the price awesome goes down on that i'll probably hop into that, that started the, this is the last thing i'll say about it um shakira is the uh game that started all the controversy because the the base game is so difficult it's um, like again it's in the yeah uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that they were all upset that the game didn't launch with an easy mode. Interesting. Hmm. And then the publishers are basically like, get good, bro. That's what I'm saying, man. More people should play Shakira. Now, this is something I don't know about, so you guys are going to have to fill in the gaps here. Uh, something's happened with Star Wars and Risky Reels and Fortnite. I saw like a Twitter clip of something, but I have no idea what's actually Yeah, I never, I never ended up, I didn't end up watching it. I don't know if it's already happened or not at this point, but there was basically just more or less um i guess lucas films or star wars in general 
had some kind of exclusive clip from Rise of Skywalker that was playing on the Risky Reel yeah. cinema screen on in screen, Fortnite. Cool. So it was like a it was like an in-game event where you got to see exclusive have Rise of Skywalker content. That so it's elsewhere? December fourteenth at two p.m. Eastern. Oh, so it hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened yet. Am I so, gonna log back into Fortnite just so you can watch a clip of Rise of Skywalkers? Am I gonna log back? I mean, into it might be Fortnite? worth it. I haven't played yeah. Fortnite in a minute. Yeah. Oh, wow. I gotta log back into Fortnite. But that could be worth it. I mean, might as well to watch a, a exclusive from Rise of Skywalker. All right, let's get Fortnite re-downloaded so we can prepare for this, um, because that would be a really fun time if we watched this together in Fortnite land. Be awesome. But then we can immediately delete it and throw whatever platform we have it downloaded out the yeah. window. Yeah, you better believe I'm gonna have one of my skins I bought back in the day on there. Oh. I'm gonna be watching this thing. Shoot. Mm. Didn't they have a uh, Stormtrooper skins? Mm. Yeah, they've done that. They just Dude, came out. So they're the they're just there's some exclusive Star Wars content don't that came out tonight. It's releasing tonight in the store. I saw it. It would be sweet. Oh, I, I hate them, but I it's I it. want it. Whatever they have, I want it. Dude, it would be sweet to have a freaking lightsaber. I don't know what it is about specifically. Ah, this is gonna get. Uh, I won't go much farther, but I don't know what it is about skins of Fortnite, but it makes me want to buy them all. They're amazing. It's like Pokemon. Yeah. Gotta catch them all. Oh. All right. So we found an interesting thing here. Where we, or not we, but there's a website that basically assigns a Star Wars character to each of the 50 states. Mm -hmm. Gene, yes. let's get that pulled I'm gonna up. find it. Let's see if we can find it. Dork Side of the Force is the, the name dork of, side this of the website, Force. which is an amazing name for a website. Dork so, Side of the Force. Yeah, so we found it, and then we picked out three. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go straight to the, I'm gonna go straight to the first of our three. So let's take some time, but the, it has all 50 in here. So. So we are from South Carolina, so I think it's a pretty strong pool that out of. The myriad of Star Wars mm. characters we could have been, we got Mace. Mace Windu. That shocks me that we got Mace Windu. Do you want to? I'll read it real quick. Why? So I'll try to. I'll try to give Mace us a synopsis. So, no, I said Windu. Did I say Window? <laughs> Dude, I'm on it. Dude, South you, Carolina. Shakira, here you go. Shakira, Mace Window. Here you go. South Carolina is often recognized for its beautiful coastlines and colonial culture. What many might not know is that Amethyst is the official gemstone of South Carolina. Considering Mace Windu's Ooh. iconic lightsaber. It says North Carolina. What is this crud? North Carolina. That's just a type. That's definitely just a typo. North, North Carolina, Carolina might, might be an appealing place. <laughs> <laughs> so, so somewhere Dude, not this state might Get be. Get your editors right. Uh, so yeah, we're South Carolina. So that's cool. Mace Windu. The so, next one I thought was very punny. Let's see. I think this is it. Yeah. And it is our man. The one, the only, chosen sense, one, right. Anakin Skywalker, Darth Vader for New York. You know why? Because it's the Empire State. <laughs> that's, yeah. It fits. Dude, that's nice. I mean, that's pretty good. You, that's you, you, clean. You, you said that like that was super corny, yeah. but I was honestly like. New York is commonly up. New York is commonly referred by its nickname, the Empire State. Oh, wait. So. Did you read that and steal it? There you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, all right. I was pronouncing to the That's people. That's two or three. Give them, give them the last one that we, we found. And then the last one, our friends over at the Seahorse Lounge live in Kentucky. Yeah, I wonder this so is going to be a big, a big reveal. We, we thought we'd go ahead and show you guys. <laughs> Hit you guys with who <laughs> Rose. <laughs> out of everyone in Star Wars canon, Kentucky, Rose is your girl. Jeez. <laughs> when, when thinking of Kentucky, many outsiders might consider it a farming state, although it's a great location for agriculture. State is also a leading manufacturer in automobiles. The state of Kentucky could greatly use an expert mechanic in Rose Tico. It could, man. There you go. Man, they, there you go. Need Kentucky. Rose. <laughs> there you really go. Needs Rose. <laughs> <laughs> That's wow. it. That's the three. Those are the three. So. Kind of feel bad for Rose. Not only is she like one of the most like outside of Jar Jar Binks, one of the most made fun of Star Wars characters on the internet, but now yeah. she's also associated with the with worst Kentucky. state, <laughs> the worst state in the the continental United States. Oh man. Wow. Just kidding. I'm sure there's lots of good places in Kentucky. The only there's also I, definitely lots of worse places than Kentucky that I can think of. That is true. Name one. Literally all of Mississippi and Alabama. <laughs> all two true. get wrecked. Everyone in Mississippi and I mean, Alabama. I'm almost positive Alabama was Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, I'm almost positive. Yeah, shout out to our boys nice. in Alabama, dude. Oh man, that's pretty fun. That's a good time. I wish we could go through all 50, but that would take forever and then probably get boring at some point. Yeah, we can just post a link to it in the show notes. That yeah, way check it out. Everyone check it out can the see their notes. state. And everyone can see their state and we can see where our listeners are listening from. So Ooh. post your I feel like post for, your states. From a, from That'd be cool. a na national standpoint, I feel like South Carolina gets ripped pretty hard. But the fact that we came out with Mace Windu is, Tough. 
is pretty hardcore. We don't have good education. That could have gone way worse. That could have gone way worse. Hundred percent. We could have gotten the what's the um the thing that uh I guess owned Anakin. What's his name? In, Watto. Uh, oh yeah, that Watto? old fly Watto? looking thing. Yeah, that's that's somebody that South Carolina. Watto, who was like a fly, and then in episode two, he was like an Italian mobster. <laughs> yeah, that's somebody that South Carolina should have got. We should not have gotten a Jedi Master sitting. You know, at Yoda's yeah, right hand. <laughs> Even though we got him in the, in the first paragraph of the description, it said North Carolina would That's actually be That's a pretty South Carolina thing to have. <laughs> That's... Oops, sorry. I meant North Carolina. All right, the last thing. We have gotten warnings all over the place. <laughs> hide your kids. Hide your wife. Star Wars Rise of the Skywalker is going to have a massive seizure concern. Yeah, here it is. Let me show you. Got a little yes. article. We'll, 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 we'll give the concerns, so... We'll let people be concerned. Star yeah, Wars, Disney thing. warns be theaters warned. of flashing light sequences. All right. Seizure concerns. So. The let's... Epilepsy Foundation. So it's pretty legit. Oh, uh, th- wow. Wow. Yeah. All right. So let's play the game. Okay. What scene would cause a, a seizure? Gotta be a massive rave at the cantina. Definitely. I mean, music blaring, <laughs> you know, death sticks flying around. Just Han shooting first everywhere. When you say death sticks. They talk about death sticks like they smoke death sticks. Oh, Apparently yeah. people mm-hmm. say it's because George Lucas has like a vendetta tobacco references. tobacco. In the original in the like the original uh trilogy, at the beginning of it on Disney Plus, it it says parental warning, it says tobacco reference or tobacco use depicted. Yeah, like the original trilogies. That Gene is making all these Star Wars movie references. Dude, is you're deep. growing. Two months ago. You didn't know any of this stuff, bro. I didn't. Any of this stuff. And now you know all of this stuff. Now you Not know. All. I don't know really You're much at all. You're probably sitting there watching like 10 minutes of Star Wars movies at a time on repeat just to make sure you don't miss anything. I do watch You're stuff s- over again. I'm telling you, I, I, I knew like it. I, I know. I know that's what you do. I do. And then in your off time, I know you're reading like... I actually haven't been reading as much as I would like to. Fan fiction. Yeah, you're reading fan fiction. Not canon stuff. He's deep. And other than that, I think it'd be really funny. We've never seen a lightsaber malfunction. So imagine if someone like put on their lightsaber and it just started like flickering and like the battery was going dead or something. It just started that's to be like, doo, 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 doo. I don't know if that's possible, but that could be really funny if like someone powered up their lightsaber and it started like, and it just, just like spazzing out. Just started gyrating. Yeah, and that'd everyone... be so funny. Okay, so Ray at a cantina. Gene, what do you think? Um, I'm going to be fairly cliche with this, but I'm also going to try not to give away some of the stuff that we're going to talk about in the main digestion. Uh, I think it's just going to be a big fight scene at the end. Uh, there's going to be, I think there's going to be tons of people. There's going to be lots of lightsabers, force ghosts, uh, force lightning. Ooh. If you can catch my drift. Force ghosts fighting. Um, all kinds of stuff. I think there's going to be lots of, lots of things what? going on. A and force ghost battle. That's it. I, mean, I think it's going to be it. Yeah. Or it'll just be Adam Driver walking through a tidal wave. And his lightsaber malfunction. Honestly, <laughs> dude. Honestly, I'm based on all the trailers that we've seen. I'm not convinced that Rise of the Skywalker just isn't that scene over and over <laughs> for two it's hours and twenty and minutes. Over he's just, just there's just a lot out. of water falling out of the sky, and he's walking through. And he's in full no. leather that weighs a hundred pounds, soaking wet. <laughs> what do you think is gonna happen, Kev? What do you think it's gonna be? All right. So my first reaction to this was like, all right. I'm going to be right about something and then I'm going to stand up and yell and then that's going to cause me to go to into a seizure. Then I thought this is probably going to be Emperor Palpatine doing lightning finger stuff and then that be that cuz that's the only, the only thing I was I was literally trying to think Unlimited about. Unlimited power. Yeah. That's what he does. After he just got oh, Don't get me on that tangent, but mm. um so I was thinking of like, okay, what's the most like visually crazy thing that you normally see? And that's when you're in a ship and it goes into light speed. And so then I was thinking, what if you had all that crazy light action going on? And then there was a lightsaber battle happening in a ship while that's happening. Mm-hmm. Then you get Emperor Palpatine lightning. I'm just basically trying to think Everything of all Everything happening that, at all times. I'm trying to think of all the things that are bright. Hey, here's and what I will fly tell you into too. The sun. Flashing sounds, sounds like you're getting Star into some Wars. theories. Star Wars people love cutting electrical wires with lightsabers. So they might just be they cut another electrical wire and a Dude, if I had a lightsaber, flashing. I would cut everything. With Did y'all get to that part in Fallen Order where everything. you cut the electrical wire with oh, the yeah. lightsaber and it like blows you apart? Are you serious? 
<laughs> yeah, spoiler. Wow. wow, dude, spoiler. It happens in the first mission. Oh, there are so many things that could happen in Star Wars. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, yeah. Well, I, guess I think it's time. I guess it's time to get into some theories. It feels like the we're there. Nitty gritty. All right, main digestion Star Wars theory. All right, I'm going to throw it to you first here, Chris. So my theories are pretty boring. And let me, let me lay a basis to my suggestions. First off, I've said this, I think I said this in a Nerd Herd Talks episode, probably the first one, but I still to this day don't feel like seven through nine should be a part of the Skywalker saga because I truly do believe one through six, not necessarily the movies, because I think people, you know, say what they want to say about the prequels, but the story of Anakin Skywalker is bringing balance to the force. That is like the complete and perfect whole story of star Wars. It doesn't need anything else. And it could stand alone without anything else. So let me ask you a question here. Yeah. What is, because I think this is very important. I don't think it's ever been defined. What is bringing balance to the force? When there is balance in the force, what is happening? There's equal, basically, essentially, there's yeah. just equal good and bad. It balances each other out, like every time. So if there were two Jedi, and then there were two Sith Lord, and that, let's just pretend in this made up scenario that that was it, would everyone just be like, all right, we're good. Let's just quit killing each other. Like, would that be balanced? Would everyone be satisfied? I mean, I don't think it's defined yes. as clearly as that. But Yes, that would bring balance to the Force, but there's always also going to be a struggle against good and evil. Yeah. So, so I think there's always going to be a power struggle that evil's always going to want to take over and good's always going to want to fight that. But the Force itself always balances. Yeah, itself. I do think the Force is trying to, like, the Force is taking care of the world, if that makes sense. So, like, think about whenever um, you always saw, like, planets being destroyed you would see someone physically hurt because they said they felt a disturbance in the force right like that was what you only ever heard jedi say that i mean you would hear like darth vader say like i know luke's here like i can feel him Well, right you You hear you you hear things like that and that's actually that exact thing is going to tie into my theories later but i guess my thing is you only ever hear jedi talking about balance in the force and so here's my thing and it seems like how they talk about balance in the force is just getting rid of the baddies. And so are they just warped in thinking that balance in the force is just lopsided all good? Because it seems like they're generally against all forms of Sith. Right? So they, they like Yoda wanted, like in episode three, tried to stop Emperor Palpatine from rising to power. Right? That didn't necessarily seem to be out of bringing balance to the force because it didn't. It, the balance of the force didn't shift, right? It was entirely... I'm getting completely derailed. You keep going. Yeah, you're pretty deep, bro. It's good questions, though. No, that's a good question. It's that's meta. definitely something to think about. Um, I Yeah, so I think Skywalker Saga 1 through 6, the perfect story. I agree with that. I would have loved to see these last three movies honestly just be like a spinoff. Honestly, kind of like I this is I view them as a spinoff. This is a really stupid comparison, but it's like the Rugrats versus Rugrats all grown up. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just their kids. Like that that it could be a story about just their kids, how they live in this Star Wars universe. But it I don't like the fact that this is considered like that. Like Episode Nine is going to be the bow tied on all nine of these movies. The only thing I have my whatever everyone has their opinions about the individual newer movies. My only issue is that it's, outside of Leia, it's pretty much diluted how you view all of the former. Yeah. And even think about, you know, we were talking about earlier, they just dropped today another TV spot where it's not actually Darth Vader that's been talking to Ben Solo this whole time, but it's been Palpatine. That pretty much takes Anakin Skywalker completely out of this these three movies as of now for the most part. Like, it's literally just like, the the chosen one who was like well, just the because, main just because that's person. What's said in that trailer doesn't mean that's going to be their well we don't know if that's actually story. true yes, I think he's but. in that particular scene I think he's walking through a Jedi temple and I think he's having a vision and I think that's the moment where he's dealing with his his internal confliction between the dark side and the light Ben Ben 
And I think he hears, and that is Emperor Palpatine trying to warp his mind. I think he has heard from Anakin. I think Emperor Palpatine is trying to play with his mind. Yeah. But keep going. Yeah. So anyway, that's my whole thoughts about this. So um, the more, so I had like crazy theories that I thought were going to happen after um, The Last Jedi, all kind of crazy things. I was like, oh, what if this happened? What if this happened? But here's what I really think is going to happen. I think they're going to play it super safe. I don't think there's going to be any crazy twists. They're definitely not going to change anyone's character the way they change Luke's character. So, but what do you mean? What do you mean super safe? Like, like I think it is going to be. So, I think Ben Demption is going to happen, right? I think Ben Solo is going to turn good. I think they are going to defeat Palpatine, and it's going to be a quote unquote happy ending. Like, I think that it's going to be like no one huge is going to die. If they do, that maybe there's going to be some way that they're not actually dead, right? This whole Force Ghost thing that we really don't understand. Um, I think that we're going to see a lot of Force Ghosts. Like, it's going to be an homage to all Star Wars. Like, they're going to do a lot of fan service in this movie. So, like, these characters, there's going to be flashbacks to characters left and right. And so, I think that um, it's going to be more, this whole movie is going to be built to be a celebration of Star Wars instead of a actual ending to the series, which I am completely fine with. And I think a lot of people are going to be fine with it once they see it. And that's why I think it's going to be safe. I don't think it's going to be heavy storytelling. I don't think it's going to be intricate, interwoven things back and forth. I think it's going to be a celebration of Star Wars and everyone is going to leave the theater happy, which I hope they do. I, I don't know. I feel like that's if there was a blank slate and you were saying, what's the last movie in the final trilogy going to be like? I would agree with that. But I feel like they backed themselves into a corner where they have to explain this stuff now. Like, because even in that TV spot you're talking about, like, you hear Snoke's voice. Now they're going to have to explain Snoke. You know, like, you know, like there's going to have to be storytelling now. So. I don't know. I feel like in general, I tend to agree with that. I do feel like it's going to be a lot of fan service. I feel like they're... I... I. Are you done? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much done. I, I mean, I definitely stuff. think I that... Um, I definitely think that... I think Palpatine could be a Force ghost and has someone else to do his bidding. Um, but I like the fact of him actually being there and um, them actually having to fight him. Um, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if this took the same vein as of, of an episode six remake. So I wouldn't be surprised if Ben Solo threw Palp again down some huge, you know, falling thing, or if Ben gets thrown down some shaft. I wouldn't be surprised of anything we see remade because I think that that is kind of what they're going to do is take that path of storytelling is almost an homage to the past movies. But that's pretty much what I think. Like I said, I don't think. Um, anything crazy is going to happen. I do think Ben Solo will be a Jedi or he will be a good sided person at the end of this movie. Do you think he's alive at the end of the movie? Um, if there's any, if anyone's going to die, it's going to be him. Ray's not going to die. No one else is going to, I don't think any other character is going to die. If there's one character that will die, it will be him. Hmm. That's my theory. Let's talk about that for a second. I think that he will follow the story arc of Darth Vader. I think in general, the entire, the only reason you won't bend solo, like people, you know, not in Star Wars universe won't bend solo to be redeemed is because he's related to Han Solo and Leia. That's the only reason why they care about him being redeemed. Outside of that, he's a monster. Like if he was just a person, if he was just a Sith Lord that killed Han Solo, all Star Wars fandom would just want him, you know, burnt, burnt alive. Right? So, I I think he's going to follow the same arc as Darth Vader. I think he is pretty much just going to be viewed as a, you know, a Sith Lord until basically the final moment. So, I think he's going to sacrifice himself to save Rey. Because I think, I'm going to say this for my theory. But I think he's going to sacrifice himself to save Rey. And I think he's going to die at the end of the movie. Um, and I think his story will be tragic. I think he will have a, a small redemption moment. But I don't think he personally will ever be able to forgive himself for killing his father. And I think that's he's going to give his last act trying to basically make up for the fact that he did that. Because I do feel like he's still conflicted in the Force, even though he like tried to kill Han Solo to like kill that confliction. Um, but 
I just recently rewatched episode six, and so I think this, you know, it ties in really well for him to follow that arc. But one of the things I was interested to see is how they they could have, and maybe they didn't foresee this as much, but how they didn't play in as much as to like seeing Darth Vader's actual like slight turning back to the good side, to the light. Because I mean, you know, Luke is like, I know there's good in you, I know there's good in you, but you don't see him do anything good until the very end that's, you know that's so it's my like point. it's like how do you know like i wish we almost would have seen like more interactions which i feel like we're actually seeing that with ben solo mm-hmm. which maybe like isn't what we got in the last but my movies, thing is you know? like what have you seen ben solo do that's good nothing you've literally seen him I mean, do he nothing. killed snoke he killed snoke because he wanted to rise to power that was the first thing he did after snoke died is he wanted to take over for snoke uh, well, not take over. He wanted to redo it his own way, but it sounded just like what Snoke had done. I don't know. Like he wasn't like he wasn't like Sno- what? What do you mean? He I literally he said that. That's him why him because, and Ray because argued. he was going to kill Ray. Like I think he like did that to save Ray. Uh, I don't know. I think he never he knew says there's that. no I, right, but I, I think, think he just saw that was his opportunity because snoke was like showboating and i just think he used that he never it's never stated that that's why he kills ray so it's just like yeah it's just as much assuming to say it's he did that to save ray than it is to you know to say that he did it for selfish reasons so i mean we can both equally be wrong here yeah but my thing is the moment literally the moment that they put down their lightsabers his first thought was i want to basically rule the empire even though they weren't calling it the empire right so like it he, he wasn't filled with like righteousness in that moment you know that's why him and ray basically split in that moment so i don't know like you saw him do that that's his maybe one glimmer of hope but i still feel like that was just mostly fueled by selfishness you know even if there was like a glimmer of like he wanted to save ray i still feel like in general it's Hmm. why don't you go ahead and jump into your theories okay uh I'm just going like extreme here because I do kind of tend to think that it's just going to follow the path that like they've made fairly obvious. Like the just looking at trailers, you would say, okay, here's what's going to happen. Right now, Ray and Kylo, they're mad at each other. But then Palpatine's <laughs> going to come into the scene and he's going to be way stronger than Kylo. And I think Kylo's going to figure that out very early on. And I think immediately Palpatine's going to rise to power. Kylo's going to be cast off. They're going to go through some crazy series of events. Kylo and Rey are going to end up together in like some sort of argument. And then they're going to decide to come together and kiss. And No, I don't believe that. Ooh. They're going to kill the big baddie and Palpatine. And then they're going to ride off into the sunset and everyone lives happily ever after. That's what I think will happen because it's a Disney movie now. But extreme theories here. You're going to find out Rey's origin story and she's... The kin of Palpatine. I think that could be interesting. I think it would be very conflicting for her. I think that's why you see her in a couple of trailers, actually, like in Sith robes with a red lightsaber. I think she finds out that, I mean, that could also be Palpatine messing with her mind. I think it would add so much interesting story if yeah, you find that. out that Kylo is related to directly to Luke Skywalker and then you find out that Rey is directly related to Emperor Palpatine. I think that would be interesting. And I think they're both already conflicted and I could very well see see a situation where at the end of the movie Kylo is a, you know, quote unquote Jedi because Jedi don't exist anymore. And then Rey could be a quote unquote Sith. I would love to see Rey turn to the dark side and that actually happen. Yeah, Disney won't do it, but I think that would be awesome. And it would destroy, like, they wouldn't do it. Honestly, I just genuinely think they would do it just because of, like, merchandise sales. But, I don't know. That would be an interesting theory. Uh, I also believe that you, Emperor Palpatine, not in this movie. Um, You kind of alluded to it. There's something, like, some sort of person acting in his in place. His stead. Uh, I just think it's... I think there's a reason you haven't seen him yet in trailers. I think they're making it so obvious that like he's going to be the central bad guy in this, and then I think they're going to pull the, the rug out from under your feet. Because you haven't seen him yet. Even in, like, you know, we won't talk about it too much because it's, like, leaked footage, but even in, like, the leaked footage that's out there that, like, you supposedly see in Pro Palpatine, you still don't see in Pro Palpatine. 
So, you, yeah. Mm. Palpatine. Yeah, so that's that's my theory there. Uh, I kind of already talked about it a little bit, but I think Ben Solo is definitely going to die. I don't see a situation where Ben ends this movie and everyone's just okay with that. You know, like he's, they're just okay with the fact that he's a good guy now. He killed Han Solo. He is going to die. You know, like I, yeah. I, I feel like that's the only end. I don't feel like anyone will ever, except for, but Leia's going to die in this movie too. So I feel like she would be the only one that would like truly forgive him of that. You know, because Ray viewed Han as a father figure. Like that she, that she literally says that, you know, I, I think there will be, there will be too much baggage in the fact that I think people will start to turn to him once they see like, is like turn to you know whatever the light, but yeah, I think that's where we are. And then um, uh, that's pretty much all I have. I kind of talked about everything else while you were going through yours, but that's good. Gene, the newbie, the Nubian prince, not newbie anymore. Oh. Expertian, bro. Right. Um, I'll hit mine fairly quickly. Fairly, fairly straightforward. I think Palpatine is. 100% alive. Okay. Uh, I don't know how he's going to play into this, but even just in the the initiation of his character from Darth Sidious into taking the stance of Emperor, and then you realize that they're the same person and all of that, when he reveals to Anakin who his Sith Lord was, like who his master was, and what his master was after, um, Darth Plagueis, you know, Plagueis, Plagueis, I'm not sure how you say it, wanting to go after immortality and figuring out how to do all of the things that Anakin wanted to do. I think there's significance Ooh. in the fact that Palpatine killed his master hmm. before his master was able to figure it out for himself because Palpatine figured it out and didn't want his master to have it. He wanted it for himself because that's what Sith Lords do. They want all the power and the knowledge for themselves. So it's kind of a hot one. That I think one. I think the Palpatine is alive. Um I think he is going to be the big bad in this movie somehow some way. Um I think that's the catalyst for what everyone is calling Ben Dimption. Um because I think that's where they realize that Palpatine is much worse than the struggles that they're going through and trying to figure out and so they all join forces Ray and Kylo specifically to fight the dark side of the force. And that's what brings balance to it is because they form the opposite of the darkness that is Palpatine to fight him. I think Ben's the Skywalker and I think it's his circle of everything from struggling, killing his father and redeeming himself to the light. That is the rise of the Skywalker. Um, that's what I believe. So I think it's cool. Just a big, it's a big circle too because all of it works out because I put it at the end of this. You guys can read it. It made me laugh when I thought of it. It's just like super big Ben Dimption because Obi-Wan gets called Ben at the end of it. Ben, ben Kenobi fails Anakin. Luke fails Ben Solo. And then it all comes full, full circle. And so it's like a giant Ben Dimption that Obi-Wan is redeemed because Anakin got through to... Luke in his way, as well as Obi-Wan and Yoda, who kind of pulled that full circle. Luke then thought he failed the third generation, and it all comes in together at the end to work out for the good of the galaxy against hmm. Palpatine. Nice. Those are some. This is the only thing I'll say. What if the key ones. to immortality is a Sith Lord has to get his Sith Padawan to kill him? Could be. Literally every single Sith Lord would have immortality. Well, that's just the way play it just. Happens. Uh, no, I'm I mean, pretty sure that's what like they say happens. Like, no, Darth Maul like... didn't kill himself, hmm. and then uh, who's uh, who's the uh, the first guy that Yoda kills that Anakin you know mega decapitates? Oh, Dooku, Count Dooku, du Dooku, yeah, yeah. So hmm. they don't kill themselves, but interesting. Yeah, and I know we're getting short on time here. Should I hit these uh, our unheard? Yes, okay, quickly. Perfect. We'll talk them quickly, and then we can. All right, so we'll uh, we'll hit a couple of these. So. Mm. Um, mm. P, before you go out on Instagram, his unheard nerd theory is that R2 is narrating the saga to 3PO since they wipe him. I love this theory. That R2-D2 is really just narrating the whole entire story. That would be super funny and super cool at the end, I think. I would love it. 
yeah that that is how ridiculous would that be if that was just amazing. like truly the end of them it. just sitting around being friends i can't tell if i would love that or just be like what i mean it wouldn't change a lot it would just be like a well, like right a, it wouldn't change much, but I, I guess i would also open up all the conspiracies like did any of it actually happen or is this oh, a crazy gosh, r2 yeah. story um then uh, Ray goes dark and Kylo goes light. Oh, cool. We talked about this a little bit. Yeah, we yeah, talked yeah. about some of these. Bang, bang. Palpatine cloned himself. And uh, that's who slash what Snoke is. Oh, Gene doesn't agree with that because he's got a, the hot, spicy Mandalorian take. I don't. Well, watch both Nerd of Nerd mine, talks. Mandalorian, yeah, I watched Nurture Talks for my, my takes on Snoke. And if you just listen, you know my take on Palpatine being in this movie. Palpatine. So. Before we recorded this, I literally was googling if snoke could ever like physically touched anybody in the star wars <laughs> to make sure he wasn't a force projection um and then uh last one here is what if ray and kylo were siblings and she is the skywalker that is rising i actually i think i skipped over this in general in mind but i actually can buy into this a little i bit saw because, that on yours yes um I, I, because I that. between because luke and leia also have similar connections to this yeah. not quite as strong as what kylo and ray have because i do think that snoke or palpatine or whoever did exploit their force connection but you do see between siblings stronger force connections aka darth vader knowing that luke had just arrived you know things like that um so i could actually buy that i think that would yep. be interesting i could get down with it and i just don't know how they wouldn't know well i mean I like know. leia and han were pretty like cognizant like their whole life like i don't think that like how would they not know that they had another kid uh, because and why would they abandon her? Okay, because Han abandoned, or I don't say abandoned. I mean, maybe half sister. Han and Leia split, but they'd still be related. Dude, there's no way they would make Han and Leia split. They could not change. They did. They Han at like they were not together. Come episode seven, but it was because of Ben, right? Like, wasn't well, it because right, of right? But you could assume that maybe he had had another kid. You know, it wouldn't be like the I can buy thing. maybe half sibling. There's no way it's Han and Leia's child. I could, yeah, I could see that, but they'd still be related. That's my thing there. Mm. They would share the the blood of Han, but that means they wouldn't have the, for like a better term, the good blood in them, the force blood in them, <laughs> the metachlorian blood. Um, and then uh, we'll get into our very own Maria's. Theory. Maria! She had a lot. You got a lot. She had a lot of takes. A uh, lot of Dark Ray is possibly a force vision that Kylo sees. Like it. I think everything related to Dark Ray at this point is. Just pretty much a guess, because honestly, I'm not even confident that's actually going to be in this movie. That'd be kind of mm, funny. Because you only saw that, what, in one trailer like a really long time ago? Yeah. I would not be shocked if that was completely cut. Um, at some point, Ray Kylo discovers Palpatine has been pulling strings and is the big bad. Uh, yes, that's probably going to happen. They will team up to find a way to destroy him. Yes, that will definitely happen. During the final showdown with Palpatine or someone, something of Palpatine's making, Ray will be hurt or in danger. <sighs> Thoughts there? Probably. Probably. They like someone to come to the aid of someone else. I think of the two I think of the two of them, if it if we're, everyone's under the assumption that Ray and uh Kylo will be the one fighting whoever the big bad is, I think that Ray will definitely be the one to extend herself too far and get herself in danger between her and Kylo. So. And then Ben will step in front or take the lead during fight to save her in some way. This is this is literally exactly what I think is going to happen. This is this is almost like I think this is the most like the most like Disney ending that could possibly happen here. Um, I think you're there's going to be like five seconds where you're like, oh, he's going to die. And then Kylo's gonna. This is gonna be Kylo's redemption moment. At least how I picture it, and apparently how Maria pictures it as well. Um, ben will be. Oh nope. Ben will be mortally injured, and or die as a final act of sacrifice for Rey, the light to defeat Palpatine. Uh, yes. There will be a Force Ghost, Anakin, and possibly others. I think Force Ghost Leia is gonna be cool. She is definitely gonna be a Force Ghost. And I think that maybe like the super emotional scene you see of Ray hugging Leia in like the bright golden forest, mm -hmm. I think that that's a force ghost, Leia. Mm -hmm. I think she's going to hug her and her arms are going to go through. This is where I think we differ. Um, ben will either receive force healing from Ray or from force ghost to come back from death, aka the literal rise of Skywalker. 
That would be crazy. That would be hard for me to get behind if Force Ghost resurrected a dead person. So me and Maria were actually talking about, about ooh about this before, and we talked about how you know how Parker was talking about Darth Plagueis and trying to find yeah. immortality. That maybe it was found, and this whole Force Ghost idea, they're able to use that power to bring him back to be the Rise. So interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah, my, I guess my whole thought on the whole like immortality thing is that that is what Force Ghosts are. Like, I think when Obi Wan became more powerful than Anakin could ever imagine, yeah, I think that he found immortality. He sacrificed no, himself. I'm with you on that too, but and, it would be cool if they tied it back in. Yeah, I think I would just in general like, I think I would view that as corny. If like he died and then he just came back to life, and then you know what I mean? I don't know. I think I would personally think that was lame. Do you think Harry Potter's lame? No, but. Harry Potter, they had Horcruxes that tied into it, not just like all of a sudden figuring out that in one moment that Force can just bring somebody back to life because it's convenient because Kylo just died. You know? Uh, and then there will be a scene on Tatooine with Binary Sons as a symbol of hope, story coming to an end. Definitely. The Force yeah, with that. Um, theme will be played and it will roll. Yeah, I pretty much, outside of a few qualms, I think that's exactly what will happen. Mm -hmm. Um, So, episode ran a little long. I'm excited. So pumped. This time next week, we will literally be watching. We might be almost done. No, we'll be watching. No, we'll be. Yeah, it. We'll we just be there. We'll be. We'll be there. <laughs> Dude, the we'll credits will still be rolling. We'll be Are you kidding me, bro? <laughs> almost done. Almost. Yeah, almost we'll be done. two hours into credits rolling. Oh. Um, no, this is crazy. What time are we seeing it next? Seven. Week? Seven o'clock. I'm ready. It's gonna, it's be, gonna be a good time. So good. Uh, next week's episode, we're also again we're doing our gift exchange. That is true. I keep for, I keep forgetting that we're, we're gonna doing be that, doing yeah. a latrine screen <laughs> Star Wars exchange. episode. What is this? Nine <laughs> reactions, <laughs> spoilers, hot takes. There will be spoilers, but anyone who listens to this podcast will have already seen it. So I feel confident. Yeah. If you don't figure your life out, if not, we're telling you that you better see it before you watch. <laughs> if not, or I don't care because I'm going to tell you exactly yeah, what happens. We're going to so, tell you what we think. Uh, no, it's going to be a lot. It'll be a good time. Uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. Make sure to hit us up on all of our socials. You can check us out on YouTube, uh, Nerd Turd Podcast. We also do our Nerd Turd Talks where we review the Mandalorian series. There, you can check bah, it out. Bah, bah. Um, Nerd Turd Pod, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Make sure to leave a rating, five star review. Like and subscribe. Like, on subscribe. And cue the music, baby. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Ba -da -ba. Thank you for listening to the Nerd Turd Podcast, a podcast devoted to consuming and digesting all things nerd and expelling it out for the world to hear. If you enjoyed listening, you can support us by following and subscribing on all social media platforms at Nerd Turd Pod and leaving us a rating and review wherever you listen. We hope we've given you something to digest in your nerd life. From all of us at NerdTurd, keep it nerd, and we'll see you soon.